Hello and welcome again to Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm doing this rather shabby looking Honda motorcycle and trailer. It's a Matchbox Leslie number 38. And this yellow one with the black plastic wheels was produced between 1968 and 1969. Now what's wrong with this model? Well, let's ask another question. What's right with it? If you have a look under here, you can see that the drawbar has been snapped off. That is quite a major repair right there. It's obviously going to need repainting. And there's some Honda stickers that should be on this, one on each side. Inside's a bit ordinary, so I'm going to have to get straight into that. Well, let's have a quick look at the motorbike before I start. This has obviously been well played with. Somebody, for some uh, re reasons unknown, has uh, slapped a little bit of red paint here and there on there. And uh, the actual hand grips on the handlebars are snapped off. So that's going to be a bit of an awkward fix too. And there's supposed to be a centre stand that's missing. So I'm going to strip the paint off this motorbike. Um, today I'm leaving the wheels on. To take them off, I think, would be extremely difficult and time-consuming. And there would be a risk that I could damage the forks where the front wheel fits in. So I'm not going to use paint stripper because that will eat away the tyres. I'm going to use this caustic soda and some hot water. Now when I do this, I'm using these black industrial-style rubber gloves. And I'm going to film the reaction using my homemade Lego camera stand where I just sit my phone in that slot and I get a nice steady image. I've made this little hook on the end of a piece of wire and I'm going to use that to dunk in the model and then retrieve it after the paint has been removed. I feel like a mad professor here with the rubber gloves on and the chemicals. So not boiling water but close to I boiled the kettle and let it cool for five minutes. Now I'm chucking in a couple of tablespoonfuls and this stuff goes off like a frog in a sock when you first put it in. And then I'm uh, immersing the motorcycle, put the lid back on the container, and we stand back and watch the show. Now this is sped up about ten times, but as you can see the paint is uh, being removed, it's being softened and then it detaches and it's actually being removed somewhat by a convection current in there that's being generated by the, the heat of the reaction. So after the paint has been removed or loosened, I take it out, wash it in this cold bath of clean water, being uh, mindful to keep my rubber glove on because this thing's still covered in caustic soda of course so I'm trying to remove the paint and the caustic soda in one operation here so that I can handle it with my bare hands. And here we go. Well, I'd say it got like 99.9% .9 of the paint off. Now here's some scraps I recovered from the bath and I'm going to use those to match the colour later on. There's still some tiny little bits stuck into this intricately cast model. Uh, so I'm brushing it over with this soft wire brush to get into all those nooks and crannies and grooves. Now just to finish it off and to remove the marks left by the brush, I'm using some of this brass wool. And brass wool as opposed to steel wool that is commonly used is a lot softer and a lot kinder to this soft metal. Oh, this is pretty much ready for painting. Except I've got to fix those handlebars. Hmm, forgot about that. Just look at the detail here. You've got the exhaust pipe, you've got the fins, cooling fins on the engine cylinder head there. You've even got a Honda badge on the tank. And there's a number seven on the front. Fantastic detail, I do love these Matchbox models. The designers did a really good job. There's where the stand should go. 
There was a plastic centre stand with these models, but this one's missing, as they are on most models. So I'm going to have a go at 3D printing one of those. Now I'm going to take the wheels off this trailer. But before I do, one of my subscribers said, I'm interested about the brass wool. We all know steel wool burns when exposed to a naked flame. Does the brass wool burn? So I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a little short experiment. So there's the steel wool. And it's kind of, once you set fire to it, it just keeps burning. Look at that. It's not a flame, it's more just, I'm not too sure what, it, what you'd call that. But it just chases around inside the fibres of the ball of the, the iron wool there. Or steel wool. Now this is the bronze wool. And it looks initially like the same reaction's about to occur, but no. It's kind of self-extinguishing. But I did notice it burns with that lovely green flame when it's exposed to the to the heat there. I wonder if anyone knows why it's green. Quite mesmerizing really. But no, it doesn't catch fire. For the subscriber that asked, it does act differently to the steel wool. Interesting. Right, moving on, where was I? I'm going to remove the axle and wheels off this trailer. So I'm doing it old school here with my Dremel and grinding tool, grinding stone. Uh, somebody else suggested, why don't I put a washer over the end of the axle? And that will mitigate the risk of damaging the tyre by going a little bit close with the spinning Dremel. Well, out of all these washers here, I couldn't find one. Although I did find this little plate of metal with a tiny hole in it, which seemed like just the right size. I thought, oh, you know what, I might give that a go. Anyway, whilst I was handling it, you wouldn't believe it, I dropped it on the floor and it shot underneath one of my cupboards. And I tried for about 20 minutes to find it and I gave up. So I'm going back to basics. No washer on this one, maybe the next one. I'm just being extra careful now because people go, you should have done the washer. So, oh, oh, I don't need the long nose pliers. That just fell off, which is great. Now I shall be uh, sprucing these up later. Now the gloves are back on and I'm going to remove the paint off the trailer. Remember, I didn't want to use the paint stripper on the motorbike because it would have chewed up the tyres. But uh, And I could have used the caustic soda on the trailer, I guess. But do you know what? I don't actually like using the caustic soda. It's chemicals. It's, it's gases coming off. If you spill it, it burns you. The glass shatters. Well, it has done for me twice. And uh, it's a little bit risky, I think. But uh, each to their own. I mean, there's risks involved with this paint stripper too. It is a caustic chemical and uh, can burn, but it's easy just to sort of clean up afterwards. It's, it doesn't spread everywhere if you have a catastrophe. I'm just going to stop here and move Sookie because he's grunting. So after I've let the paint stripper do its job, I use this old white tooth brush I've got to clean off the paint in a bath of water. I can see some potential here now. This is looking better. As the day goes by, I can see I'm making headway. Uh, without exception, every model I strip with the paint stripper always needs some extra uh, treatment to get the paint out of the corners and creases of the model. Somehow the paint stripper doesn't quite get in there. There's a few tiny little scraps of paint left, so as usual I use these dental tools just to chip away. Because if I put the undercoat on there, you will see the chip. The undercoat's extremely fine and reveals all, all marks on the casting. Almost amplifies them, so you have to try and get this as clean and smooth as possible for the best result. All right. Looking good. Oh, mustn't forget, quick buff up again with the bronze wool. Right, this is ready for undercoating, but first I've got to repair 
that drawbar. And because I don't have a spare, I'm going to have an attempt at 3D printing quite a complex little piece. So just starting off here, I'm filing off the broken off piece to try and give myself a flat edge or rather a, a smooth rounded edge onto which to mate a new piece. So this program I'm using here is a 3D design program and it's called SketchUp. And I wouldn't be surprised if they use this in schools these days to teach kids how to do this because it's very intuitive and there's a lot of information on Google about how to make things happen if you want to make a, a hole in something for example like that you can Google it how to do it and five minutes later you're doing it and uh, you learn as you go now like I say this is one of the more complex smaller details and I have recently uh, fixed up my 3D printer it was playing up a little bit and I've recalibrated it and I'm having some really good results now, it's a flash forge 3D printer and it uses PLA which is a, a plastic polymer string on a roll and this was my first attempt and I'm looking at it thinking well the dimensions aren't too bad but it's not going to fit in there because there's that lump under the so underneath at the front so I've got to make a space to accommodate that lump so I can get this piece to sit further back and snug up against the underside of the trailer. Well it fits over that lump quite nicely but it still looks a bit chunky and it's not actually sitting particularly well. I want it to kind of nestle in there so I'm going to try and cut a piece out so that that piece there that I pointed at with the cocktail stick will be higher up underneath and concealed. So I just a bit of uh, a bit hit and miss and guesswork. I chop out a section there. Here's a comparison of the the one before with the new one. Now that grey stuff's a little bit of a plastic filler that I put on there because there was a couple of pinholes in there when it was when it came off the printer. Anyway, uh, here we go again. This is the Mark III version. And it looks a heck of a lot better. It sits there nicely. It's got good depth. And all round reinforcement from the original parts of the model. And I think when I glue this into position and fill it, fill any gaps around it, it's going to look schmick. Which means really good. So I've just sanded down that body filler lightly. And this is ready to glue on. Now I'm using this Starbond medium viscosity super glue. The company Starbond sent me some, so I thought I might as well use it. And it's got this accelerator with it. So if you're assembling components and you don't want to sit there and hold them for five minutes, you spray the accelerator on. And then when you touch the glued part to the part with the accelerator on, it's supposed to fix almost instantaneously. But uh, I can ne you can never trust these things. Everything's different. Too many variables, really. So I just hold it with my thumb there for maybe three seconds. And it looks like it's holding. And all in all, it's not a bad fit. There's some very minor little gaps around the edges that I shall fill. Anyway, rather than wiggling it around immediately after doing it, I leave it to set by just balancing it on some coffee stirrers there. After about five minutes, it's now time for me to inspect this and see what needs to be done. Um, here's the little gaps I'm talking about. That they're small, but they're noticeable, and they'll be even more noticeable when the model's painted. So I'm just going to fill those in with a tiny bit of this Humbrol model filler, using a cocktail stick to actually try and force it into the gap. So it becomes all becomes one. 
and uh, hopefully when it sets it will reinforce the join as well as hide the gaps. Sometimes your finger is the best option when you're doing things like this because when you run your finger over something it's because uh, it's curved kind of creates a nice fillet a sort of a, you know, a sculpted fillet join. It's a bit fiddly a little bit of stuffing around sometimes you put the product into the gap and then when you go to smooth it out it gets dragged out again can be frustrating but it's worth taking your time and getting it right. Here it is, I've uh, given it a light sand with a little, I rolled up some very fine emery paper into like a little sausage and just went around that join at the front and it's kind of sculpted it nicely into a very smooth looking join so I'm happy with that. Now here's those remnants of paint that I recovered from the wash bath off of uh, after I hit the motorbike with the um, caustic soda. So I'm using these two paints here, Vallejo Blue and the uh, Mr. Hobby Metallic Green. I'm hoping to make something similar. You see, the original paint was metallic and I've never ever attempted to replicate a metallic paint finish before. But I do have a little trick up my sleeve and that is I have a can of Tamiya Pearl Clear and what that is, it's a clear coat with minute sparkly silver bits in it and the worst case scenario will be I can't match the paint exactly but I'll be able to spruce it up afterwards with um, some of the Pearl Clear because it will put like a sparkly finish over everything uh, now this paint matching went on for, I don't know, 20 minutes and I kept adding a bit of silver, maybe a couple of drops of blue. It's a very, very awkward colour to match. Uh, I got something similar. I won't pretend it's exact because if I did, everybody would just say, no, it's not. And that would be the truth. So I got it as good as I could. Now these hand grips on the handlebars that are missing, this is going to either wreck the model or make it really really good. What I've done is I've filed the broken stubs off that were there so I've got a flat area to work with. There's a view from the top. Uh, the drill I'm using is so small, so fine, it won't fit in my drill truck chuck so I've uh, wrapped a little bit of black insulation tape around it so that the drill can actually grip it. Now it's a very small area there I'm using a spring-loaded center punch to get me started so the drill doesn't wander off and rather than putting this in a vise because it's such an awkward shape and a fairly fragile piece I'm just holding it by hand. Not best practice I know but sometimes you just got to take risks. Now that's just a test fit uh, to see whether I'm deep enough but I actually went a little bit deeper on both sides and then uh, yeah I'm using this bulldog clip by the way in case you're wondering what that was. It's the uh, the spring clip off of a bulldog clip. Well that's what I call them and I've cut two pieces the same length they had a bit of a burr on the end, so I've scraped that off. Now using my super glue again, I've put some super glue, a little puddle of it on the top of that shot glass, and I'm dipping the wire or the homemade hand grips into the glue and then just pushing them home into those holes using some very small pliers that I've got. And I give them a bit of a tweak. I've got a couple of seconds before the glue goes off, and look at that. I think that looks awesome. Uh, there is a slight gap at the top because the, the bars are angled down because they're, they're clip-on racing bars, they call them. Well, they used to call them when I was into motorcycling. And so I'm filling that little gap up with some super glue and baking soda. And I'm using this little bottle here that was uh, sent to me by a very kind person from Slovakia called Eduard Dasek and it's a great idea 
so you don't waste the baking soda you can place it very accurately with that fine puffer nozzle so uh, thank you Edouard I'm using your item because it's it's really good idea now because I've left the wheels and tires on this model and they are impossible to mask or it would it be extremely lengthy process I am for the first time ever painting the model with a paintbrush so I'll show you how that turned out later now I've undercoated the trailer with the Tamiya undercoat the fine grey and I'm going to spray it with this Tamiya yellow, bright yellow. And it closely matches the original Honda color of the trailer. The original Matchbox Honda trailer color. So I just keep going, keep going, keep going. This paint dries really quick in the spray booth and uh, by the time you've, it's a bit like the Golden Gate Bridge. By the time you've painted it completely, you've got to start again. So I do the first coat all over, and then the second coat all over. And I try to apply it medium, medium uh, thick coat, and uh, it glosses up quite well. Now the wheels, when I painted the motorcycle, I was a little bit careless. I got some little uh, spots of the color that I've made up on the tires are also a little bit dull anyway so I'm giving them a spruce up with some dilute Tamiya X1 black gloss black this is very fiddly you need a good brush for this I bought these brushes from a shop called spotlight in Australia I've had them for a while now and I'm very pleased with the the style of brush it's got like a little rubber hand grip to help you maintain control over it so here's a close-up that's the type of brushes I'm using some people ask the Royal and land nickel I think it's called and there's that rubber grip I was talking about and now I just place the models on those magnetic paintbrush clamps uh, and leave them alone to go off. I'm having a bash at making a replacement axle for the trailer using these small rivets I bought online. First off you've got to remove that collar which is quite easy. And I'm just putting this in to see what it looks like, whether it's long enough, whether it's the right diameter. And I think it's perfect. Now my wife Julie, I cheated, I employed her services. She painted these wheels for me with a black wash. And she's done a beautiful job, look at that. Uh, just cut the excess off here I'm actually marking it because I realize I want to cut a little bit lower than that so now I've got the mark I can just nip a millimeter or two more off and I leave enough to form a mushroom using my drill press in the shed like this Remember I've got a couple of modified nails there with a little cup drilled in each end and with the drill press I mushroom the end of the axle over. There you go, that wheel shouldn't fall off. This is looking quite good. Look at that draw bar. I swear that's the same model I started with. It looks like a new model. These decals I printed on my printer. I just, I actually used a standard font, believe it or not. So I guess Matchbox probably did when they made their original stickers because these are highly accurate replacement stickers I made and they look just like the real thing. So I got some uh, warm water, tweezers, some off-cuts, paper towel here. 
some cotton buds and some decal set and soften solution which is a great thing oh, I'll just put a little dab on there now the water slide decal paper I'm using I bought it on eBay from China and you only have to immerse it for maybe five seconds and the transfer separates from the backing sheet so there's no hanging around you've got to be confident and get straight into it because if you do the decal ends up floating around in the water folds up on itself sticks to the bowl and you end up screwing it up and chucking it away so speed is the essence for this and confidence just say you can do it and you can do it uh, I used to dither around and it, I got in all sorts of trouble now I just go for it and think if it doesn't work I'll just wash it off and do it again um, whilst I was 3d printing the draw bar I also punched out some of these small center stands and I did them in white first without even realizing they were meant to be black it's just that the printer was loaded with white filament so I swapped it over for the black and punched some more out and they fit quite good they're a force fit they go into sort of like a keyhole slot so you have to push them in and then they hold in hold themselves in hmm. works quite well so if you want one of those let me know I'll send you one now here's a reminder of what we started with very sorry looking model ready for the scrap heap and this is what it looks like now with a replacement draw bar uh, new stickers new paint job a new axle spruced up wheels etc etc it looks fantastic now Michael is a milkman on Sundays he leaves his milk float at the yard and indulges in his passion of amateur motorbike racing he has no need for the internet or social media. He has a close bunch of mates that he races with each weekend at his local racing track at Snetterton in Norfolk, England. He's heading there now. He reckons his vintage Honda racing bike will be the fastest thing there today. Oh look, he's the first to arrive. He picks garage one in pit lane, unloads and goes and parks his car. Soon the air will be filled with the sound of highly tuned race engines and the smell of burning rubber. After a while, waiting, he realises he's on his own today. The race meet was cancelled this weekend. I guess he didn't get the email. Oh well, there's always next week. This is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.